What's up, YouTube? Today, I want to talk about physical modeling in Serum. So today's episode, we're dealing with string sounds and woodwind style sounds. So anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So you don't specifically need serum for these kinds of techniques. I kind of just want to outline that a lot of these processes that we use are derived on very similar things. A lot of physical modeling in, you know, more physical modeling style synthesis is derived from delay lines and all sorts of stuff like that. So we can make very similar stuff using more traditional synth tools. And so you could use Vital, Faceplant, whichever synth suits your needs. But today I chose serum because it's kind of old, so this might, you know, spark some new inspiration for you with that kind of old synth that's gathering dust. Come, kitty. So, like I said, a lot of physical modeling techniques actually use a delay line, which is tuned to specific frequencies. So we could use an effect, like just a traditional delay, modulated to specific frequencies. But in case you didn't know, the comb filter which, you know, Serum actually has a fair amount of comb filters built into the flanges section over here. A comb filter is essentially a delay that's tuned to specific frequencies. If we open up comb plus one over here and tune up the resonance, which is essentially the feedback of the delay, what we can do is we can actually get this to act like a delay by just turning the frequency down real low. So what I want to do is just set up a quick patch here, which just uses like an impulse sample. Let's just use one of these attacks, set it to retrigger. And so if we set the noise to go through the filter. We can actually get it to act like a delay. So this is interesting when we set it to key track. So what's going to happen now is it's going to take the MIDI input and it's going to tune this frequency based on the MIDI input. Then it allows us to actually play this noise through that delay line in a physical modeling style fashion. So the best way to kind of uh, hear how this is working is to set up an envelope over here on the level. But because Serum has this nifty modulation of the LFOs, we actually want to turn the LFO into envelope mode like this. And we can turn off the BPM sync by switching those two buttons like this. So now this LFO is going to act like an envelope. It's just going to trigger once and we can assign this to the level. And so now what we want to do is we want to choose a different noise. So I'm just going to choose one of these built in ones like H breath is a pretty good one. And so the midpoint of this filter is actually really high frequency. So what we can do is we can put a tuner afterwards and then just tune this frequency of the filter down till it corresponds to the note that we're playing on the keyboard. All right, that's close enough. It's playing a C. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to switch this comb to this uh, comb L6 plus. So what this is, is basically a comb filter with a low pass filter in the chain as well. So what this allows you to do is kind of like remove some of the high frequencies from that resonance. And it gives you a bit more of a string like pluck tone. So remember, this is just a noise signal playing through here. We can actually just reset this to, I think it's ARP circuit. I think that's the default one in Serum. So you can hear that effect that this filter is having on that default noise signal. So 
So what we can also do to give it a bit more realism is assign the velocity to the frequency, uh, the low pass frequency. So that when we hit it harder, it kind of a little bit more high frequencies come through. And what I also want to do is I want to modulate this because as you can see here, like when we change this shape, you get a variety of different tones everywhere from like a kind of more plectrum like pluck sound to a more bowed like string sound. What we can also do is we can set this noise oscillator here to randomize the phase. And that just gives you a slight little bit of realism. And then you can also use this pitch to kind of further alter the noise before that signal. But like I said, these organic ones here, specifically this H breath, are really, really good for this physical modeling type stuff. What we can also do is we can set the velocity as the auxiliary source for this LFO one to the noise level. And so now, the harder we hit, the louder it's going to send that signal through to the filter. Cool. So what I also want to do is I want to add some release. The, the filter's resonance here is kind of tied to the main envelope's release. So if you have it at default and you just the sound, you don't hear that release of the filter, right? So if we turn the release up, we can actually hear it a bit better. Cool, that's sounding good. Let's add some effects here and just go with some chorus, some hyperdimension and a bit of delay and reverb. Cool, that's sounding great. So now what we want to do is we want to assign some of these X and Y points of this LFO to some macros. So what we can do is we can just drag this macro and like hover it over, I think the Y does left and right. Okay, no, the Y is up and down. Anyway, we want to get it so that it's something like a pluck like this. And when we modulate it with this macro, we can get it to go. All the way to like this triangle, so it creates that like bow like sound. Okay, that's sounding good. So now, what we want to do is we want to use a macro to modulate some of these X and Y points of this LFO, thus creating different exciters. So, for example, if we want more of a bow like sound, or if we want more of a plectrum-like sound. So here what I want to do is I want to modulate both the Y, so that's going to go up like that. Except we want to go down because the bow is often much louder, right? Uh, you'll see now what I'm talking about. And the X as well. So this X, we can go all the way up and down. So we start with like this plucky sound. And now we can modulate all the way up and then the volume goes down a little bit as well just to so it doesn't get too loud. And we can also do a bit of modulation on the speed as well so that when we open this bow setting, it slows it as well. So 
So one thing about the key tracking of the comb filters in Serum uh, that I've noticed is that the pitch bend doesn't key track automatically. You've got to actually set that up. So what we can do is we can actually set up a uh, pitch bend over here. And let's set this to filter frequency cutoff. So here I generally just do like one or two, just so that it's a tiny bit of pitch bend to give us a little bit more realism if we need to bend those notes. Uh, we also want to make sure that this is bipolar, otherwise the tuning is going to get all wonky. So the real trick is to actually go in here and edit some of these curves just to get a little bit more of a kind of like organic play because a lot of the time with these more organic instruments, everything is not very linear. Do you know what I mean? I don't know how to... <laughs> you just get slightly more realism that way. Usually what I do just for a little bit of extra control is a filter over here right at the beginning with a low pass and then I'll apply the same f uh, the same LFO to that frequency and then just tune it in. That just allows us to kind of shape the harmonics a little bit more. Say for example we don't want as much highs in the sound etc. Then for more kind of wind type sounds, what I generally do is just turn the delay down, the reverbs up, and then just play it in a lower key. Obviously turn the bow macro up. And we can change this breath pitch of this noise oscillator down a bit. And also the type of noise that we use can drastically change that tone as well. So it seems like the Comb L6 Plus is better for the more string-like sounds, where Comb L6 Minus is kind of better for the more wind-like sounds. We could also switch these macros for the velocity control. Depending on how, how we play the sound, we're getting different bow or pluck trim like sounds then we can actually play it polyphonically so for example we can have a pluck and a bow playing at the same time so obviously there's a lot more fine tuning to it um i actually managed to come up with this sound uh, last time i was playing with this
So anyway, sometimes it's hard to nail that exact sound within the confines of a few minutes in a tutorial. So, you know, just fine tune it, you can get there. It's those basic concepts, like you can see here. Um, just a noise, comb filter, some effects, tune that comb filter, some envelopes, and you're well on your way to create some really cool kind of like uh, physical modeled realistic sounds. So I'm going to be uploading this preset to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.